I think how you got into Bioshock, I think that's super interesting. Well, it was um, how I got really into scoring games. But I did score some games in the 90s. I scored some games for Philips Interactive. It was a, it was a weird format. They made a video trees. So it was like you'd see a, a scene and then you'd have a decision to make. Okay. Um, video trees? Yeah, like video mm. tree games. Wow. It, it, was, it was a weird format that was popular at that time. And mm. Philips, which is a big, um, I think, Dutch electronics company, mm -hmm. um, had hardware that they were pitching. <clears throat> so they were making a game called Voyeur. Which was sort of a rear window, rear windows of Hitchcock movie about you, mm. the the character in rear window sees a murder out the, or he thinks he sees a murder out his rear window of his, and he's stuck in his apartment because he has a broken leg. He's healing, so he can't go anywhere. And so they were making sort of a video game version of that, and um, you watch a video tree, and you do you have enough evidence to call the police? If you do, then you can call the police, but if you don't have enough evidence, it's one of those kind of things. I don't remember all the details, but that was kind of how it worked. So we decided together that a score in the style of Bernard Herrmann, because famously Bernard Herrmann scored Hitchcock mm. movies, you know? So I thought that's terrific. Now what differentiated Philips Interactive from all other video games at that time was that you could um, put compressed music because it was on a CD. Mm -hmm. CDI was the technology. Everything, and now it may seem like a tiny amount of data now, but it, it, it held like almost 800 megabytes of data. <clears throat> so it permit, part of that games were just basically little synth engines mm -hmm. on, on these chips, and a little bit of MIDI would kind of trigger these synthesizer sounds, and that was it, you know, like a little mono kind of little bits, you know. Uh, they were creative, certainly, and um, and fascinating, but that wasn't what I did. Okay, I was more orchestral. Or, that you know, wasn't your world. No, like that wasn't. Any, I didn't. That wasn't something I was interested in. What year was this? Or, or roundabout. This is 1993. 1993. Mm -hmm. So I scored Voyeur, and then a couple of the games, and then Philips actually went out of business. Um, but the score for the Voyeur was done with an orchestra. Was, I had an orchestra. And it, it, it either was or, or was one of the very first video games ever to have an orchestral score. I was going to say, because at that time, they just didn't have the, the space no, to have that you, sort of audio. No. So this is amazing. <clears throat> exactly. Mm. So it was really, I had this, I ended up with a really nice Bernard Herrmann orchestral score. Bernard Herrmann at ish, okay, my version of Bernard Herrmann. So now, jump ahead to 2004. I had an agent at the time, and he was pitching me, and, and he was working real hard for me at the time. So uh, one of the things he did was he was just sort of shotgunning my resume around and sent it over to THQ, which was a, uh, a publisher, a video game publisher, and they were making a game called Destroy All Humans. And so they heard, they asked for a demo, I sent a demo, and, they heard, and there was one cue on there that was sort of in the style of Bernard Herrmann. So, um, they said, oh, do you have any more of this? Because we're doing something in this genre. And I said, yeah. And I sent over all that Boyer music. And um, they sent it over to uh, Brisbane, the Pandemic Studios, which was making this game Destroy All Humans, which is a tongue-in-cheek game about an, a little green alien coming to Earth in the 1950s, and they wanted <clears throat> 50s era sci-fi music like Bernard Herrmann's score for The Day of the Earth Stood Still, yes, yes. which is a classic Bernard Herrmann mm. and, and 50s score, sci-fi score with theremin, theremin and orchestra, yeah. exactly. So I sent that over and they, they said, we love this, this is great. So then I started to work on Destroy All Humans and I worked with Emily Ridgway, who was the audio director. and. Um, and I really enjoyed the game. I really enjoyed working on it. And I was like, actually dumbfounded in how advanced games had become. I was really woefully ignorant of what was going on because I wasn't a gamer, really. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, sort of in the background noise, what was going on, the video games and all the cool stuff was happening, but I just wasn't, wasn't focused on it. And so here I became deeply involved and they were gonna give me the budget for an orchestra. And I was thrilled and I really enjoyed working on that game. And um, 
did they, and because you came from a film background, did they really help you? I mean, I'm thinking about interactive techniques and looping and things like that. Did they really have to kind of help help you understand? Totally. I, had, um, I was clueless. Yeah. I didn't know how to, because you never loop a cue in, in a film. Yeah. Why would you? Mm -hmm. So I, it's actually Emily, in a way, she, she, did, she did me a favor, but in a way she didn't because she didn't make me learn how to do it. She would just take everything I did and she would just fix she, it for me. It. She's like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it for you. But they were loving the, the aesthetic and they loved the style I was doing. So that was most important to them, which I understand. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so she, she was great. We enjoyed working together. And the game turned out was very successful commercially. And my score was nominated for some awards. I didn't win any awards, but I was nominated. nominated. And I was just thrilled. I was like, well, this is really cool. Mm. Then in 2005, then that next year when it actually came out, I decided I'm going to go to the Game Developers Conference and really start so that was the first focusing time. on yeah, mm. focusing on gaming because I'm really. I really want to be in this. I want to at least have it be part of my. Career. And what was it about gaming in particular that you were like, yeah, this resonates, you know, with me? Really interesting music, orchestras, because the television at that time was very like, we can do it with sense and samples. Who, no one cares. Nobody gives a shit. No one mm -hmm. really cares. What the, the music's, you know, barely heard anyways. So it was. It was, and and they had. A, I I felt a real. <clears throat> Real, real excitement about them. They really cared. They, it felt like they really cared more than certainly the TV, movies, and things I was working on. And the and the budgets were good. The mm -hmm. Budgets were were very fair from a, from my creative standpoint. And then also the production budgets were. So I think that's so wonderful. Good. It's so different to film that you know you 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 are paid for your time, and that never gets.